Hi everyone, my name is Aldo and I'm from Italy. Hello everyone, I'm Vera from Moldova. Back in 2016, we sold everything out and we self-converted our Toyota behind the air into a mini home on wheels. And we started to realize our dream of driving the world with our car. By the way, we just started our YouTube channel only a few weeks ago and this is our very first proper video. We decided to create a video each week about our lifestyle and adventures around the world. So please subscribe and join us. So far we traveled over 5 continents and 50 countries and this is what we did. Before starting our tour, we would like to briefly explain you why we choose our car over the classic camper or van. First, we are driving the world over land. We wanted to go to remote places and get out of there. We knew that we will do a lot of off-road and go to places with no roads at all. For this reason, we needed a tough 4x4 vehicle. Second, we knew that we would need to ship our car between continents, across oceans and sea. And the best way to do this is inside the container. So we needed a vehicle that would actually fit in a container. Third, we are traveling on budget and we needed a good reliable vehicle with a strong diesel engine for economy and with spare parts available all around the world. So after doing our research, we found out that the Toyota Land Cruiser is considered one of the best cars to explore the world. And we're glad we made the right choice because so far our Toto did not disappoint. So before you choose a vehicle, a car, a van, a camper, you need to understand what are your priorities and what is important for you, the places you want to visit and what kind of trip you want to do. For almost four years, we lived in and traveled with our supercar that we named Toto. And today we are going to give you a full tour of how our car looks like. Let's go check it out. Our Toto is a 2005 Toyota Land Cruiser KDJ120, also known as Prado. And it was built in United Kingdom, so it's a ride and drive model. Ben and I, before leaving for this trip, we used to live in England. That is why the steering wheel is on the wrong side, like they say here. Many people have asked us if it is a problem having the steering wheel on the other side, but actually it's just a case of getting used to it. And you may be surprised to know that over a third of the world population actually drives with the steering wheel on the right. This is the engine bay. We've got a three liter turbo diesel engine with the permanent four x four traction and automatic gearbox. We bought the car second hand with 85,000 miles on it. We couldn't afford to buy a new one, but we are now clocked almost 200,000 miles on it. And what you see here, it's more or less the way this car looked like out of the factory. 95% of the parts are still the original one. We got two batteries here. Uh, the car is not 24 volts, but 12 volts, and they are 70 ampere each. 
This is the way he came out of the factory in England. Probably they want to make sure that the car can start even on a cold, freezing morning in Scotland. Over there, we've got a um, negative and positive wire. They go all the way inside the cabin where we have it connected to a 110 ampere laser battery. And that one is a deep cycle battery. The three batteries are all connected together, but we do have a switch that separates the laser battery from the starter batteries. We thought of installing a solar panel, but we never had the need of it, as these three provide enough energy for us, and the alternator is doing a top job to keep them charged. On this side, we got a dedicated transmission cooler, and that I installed myself. The original model had the, system, the cooling system for the transmission next to the radiator, but the thought of having liquid coolant mixing with the oil was not appealing. Also following the advice of a friend mechanic, I decided to separate the two cooling systems and placing a transmission cooler in front of here. On the top right corner of the engine bay, we got our breathers. They come from the transmission and the differentials. We have extended them and placed them higher up. Uh, what is a breather? A breather is a valve that it's used for um, letting out all the steam that is produced from the mechanisms of the transmission and the differentials while the parts are moving. Now, especially for water crossing, you want them to be placed high up so that the water will not enter and mix with the oil. While we are talking of river and water crossings, let's bring our attention to the snorkel. A car engine, in order to work, it needs air together with the fuel inside. So when you're driving over water, you don't want the water to enter inside the engine and ultimately break in. A snorkel helps avoiding that to happen by bringing the air intake up here. The original car had the air intake positioned right above the front right tire. And other than water crossing, we have to say that the snorkel helps breathing in some cleaner and fresher air. Imagine how dirty and hot would be the air being sucked from near a tire other than above a pier. And this is beneficial, especially when you're driving in sand, in deserts, with dusty conditions. For that, we also have installed this little box up here. This is called a pre-filter. You've got some little flaps inside that are bent like this and a kind of cylinder shaped like a V. And what did happens, this generates inside a venturi effect which makes the air rotate, pushing the heavier particles on the side and at the bottom of it. And only the cleaner air gets from the inside and down into the air filter. This also keeps um, help, help keeping the filter cleaner. The snorkel and the pre-filter, we bought them online. They are unbranded and generic, and I installed it myself. Uh, it's not a difficult job, but you need to come to terms that you will put a hole about this big in the side of your car. We are quite happy with the fittings and the job that is doing so far over four years. Behind our bumper, we got our winch. It's a 12,000 pound Rhino, and it is installed on top of a steel plate that is connected directly to the chassis. We decided to keep the original shape of the car not to attract too much attention and also having bigger bumpers and bull bars in some country it's prohibited. We only used the winch once and that was to help recover a young guy stuck on a beach in Malaysia. The only couple of times that we needed it we were either too far away from a tree or a place to hook it or we needed to come out from the rear. Whether or not you want to install a winch that is up to you. It's one of those things that you want to have it and not need it, other than have the need of it and don't have it. Under the car, starting from here and all the way down until the fuel tank, we got our skid plates. They are made of aluminium and they are 8 mm thick. They are custom built and we are glad we had them made because they saved us many times from rocks or debris hitting the bottom of the car like an oil sump transmission or vital part of the vehicle. Our suspensions provide a 4 to 5 cm lift compared to the original car and they are also heavy duty to withstand the additional 500 kg of stuff we put on the car. We choose the Iron Man 4x4 foam cells. They are made in Australia and this particular model has got little foam cells inserts that compared to the normal gas shock absorber provides a better cooling. Uh, we are very happy with it, the quality and the build. Uh, right now we have passed 170,000 kilometers on it, which is about 105,000 miles. And we've been to all sorts of terrain and roads, like the Trans Amazonica in Brazil, the Death Road in Bolivia, and more recently the Dempster Highway in Canada that takes you all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. Something else we are very proud of and happy about it are our tires, Cooper tires. A friend mechanic, also the same one that installed our suspensions and told me about the tip of the external transmission cooler, spoke about this brand. 
he goes every year rallying in Morocco with the Land Cruiser, Ironman suspensions and Cooper tires. Initially I wanted to buy the BF Goodrich, but after he spoke so well of this brand, I decided to go with it. Our first set of tires were the professionally off-road rated Mud Terrain uh, Cooper Discoverer STT Pro. On that set we managed to cover over 81,000 miles, that's about 130,000 kilometers, and we've been on all sorts of terrain, from minus 18 in Siberia up to the deserts in Australia of plus 50. This is our second set of tires, the Cooper Discoverer 83 4S. It's an all-terrain tire, snow and ice rated. We had it installed last year in the USA and we used it on the Dempster Highway, which is the road that takes you all the way to the Arctic Ocean and it is a 2,000 km round trip of some unforgiving terrain. So far, the coldest we've been on with these tires was minus 26 Celsius in Canada and we are also very happy about the quality of it. Up there we got our custom built roof rack. It hooks directly on the original roof bar and is made of anodized aluminum. It has been there for over 4 years and it is not presenting even a single point of rust. It costed us a fraction of what a branded roof rack would cost and is doing the job of we need for it. We got an additional uh, 10 liter jerry can. It provides us more autonomy. We can do with extra 10 liter about 120 kilometers. And in total, with the 90 liters of the original fuel tank, we could actually drive up to 1,100 kilometers. You see there is written water only there, it's a sticker. We use that as a deterrent in case someone may want to steal our fuel or in some countries it is prohibited to carry fuel on top of the roof rack and for that reason we place that sticker on. All around the roof rack I installed 9 LED lights. In total it's 420 watts, 214 in front, 6x18 in the middle and 2x36 at the rear. We use them as extra light while we are camping in the night and also as a deterrent in case some unwanted visitor may come and disturbing us while we are sleeping. Also up there we got a soft storage solution, it's called the Keeper and it is a waterproof, weatherproof bag that has got a zip all around and we keep all our, mainly our clothing inside. For example, the winter clothes and the sleeping bag in summer and vice versa, so the things that we don't need. There is also a couple of axle stands and some stuff that has, hasn't got really much value. You don't want to keep anything valuable up there because it could be taken. Also on top there we have a pair of uh, recovery boards. They are generic and branded and they are actually a gift from uh, a friend of us, Ruben. We met him last year in Arizona and he insisted for us to keep it. It's very good to have an additional recovery system. These two, for example, can help you in case you cannot hook your winch like to a tree or somewhere else and they are good to get you out of soft sand or even mud. So far, we haven't tried them and we hope that we will never have the need to do so. Right here, I installed an infrared rear view camera that has got a separate switch that I can turn at any time to see what's happening behind the car because here it's all obscured by the curtains and the insulation foam. It's finally my turn to talk a bit. All what you see in here, it's our camping gear. It's all foldable and fits inside our car. This up here, it's our awning, but provides additional shade. It's about three meters long and two meters wide. It's very easy to set up and it's completely foldable and goes inside the small bag. These are our camping chairs. They're very comfortable and easy foldable. You can even put a cup or a beer inside here. The table can accommodate four to six people. It's very durable, it's waterproof and resistant. This is our pop-up tent that gives you a bit of privacy. You can use it as a changing room to take a shower or if you gotta go as a toilet. This down here is our bog in a bag. It's a mini portable toilet. It has a, a hole inside where you can place a bag. We have a fully bi biodegradable bag made of corn. Up here in the pocket we have a wet wipes and a hand sanitizer. And while doing your things, you can also enjoy a beautiful panorama through a window. This is our bed. <laughs> it's six feet by four. We remove the rear seats and installed the wooden frame. Between the base of the bed and the mattress, we have a gray mat that creates a small air chamber to prevent the little mold from forming due to the contrast between cold and warm humidity. 
The mattress is made up of a layer of rigid sponge and a top layer of memory foam for greater comfort. It may seem like a small space, but some mornings we cannot just get up so much it is comfortable. In the shade with a little of fresh breeze, especially if you can enjoy a beautiful panoramic view. When you have limited space, you need to make the best of it. My mom helped and made for us these curtains that we can use also as an extra storage. Amore, what are you preparing? I'm mixing the dough for the bread. Mmm. While we're talking about food, it's now time to start showing you our cooking gear. Let's begin with this metal box here. It is a Coleman foldable camp oven and we only bought it about a year ago. It's not a professional oven, but it certainly does its job. Now imagine you are while camping in a deserted place and then you are pulling out a nice freshly homemade piece of bread. That's really, really to die for. It was a savior while we were in Alaska and we were making bread every other day, fishing salmon, making our own caviar, and we could enjoy nice hot bruschetta just right out of the oven. It was fantastic. It's uh, fairly big and uh, inside has got uh, two racks and uh, a nice freshly baked piece of bread. That's a bonus. Thank you, Vera. But when it's uh, stored and folded, it's only 25 centimeter by 25 centimeter and 8 centimeter tall. This is a single burner portable camp stove. It works with the cartridge of gas that goes inside here. And we use it to cook something quick and simple, like an omelette, frying some eggs or bacon, something that doesn't occupy a lot of space and it's easy to take out and set it up. It is stored inside a little plastic case just under our bed. This is our Coleman dual fuel double burners camp stove. For many, it's considered the best camp stove in the world, and we are really happy about it. We had it since the beginning of our trip, almost four years, and we cooked day in, day out with it. What's special about this stove is that it doesn't work on gas. We got here this little tank, which is about one liter of capacity, and it gives you six hours autonomy. It uses unleaded fuel gasoline or white gas, which is a dedicated camp stove fuel. The fact that it doesn't use gas is not just good in terms of finding your combustible fuel, but it's also when you're cooking at altitude, for example, above 12,000 feet or 4,000 meters, where the lack of oxygen may make the flame to be a bit difficult to keep it on with the normal gas. This is a problem that you don't find when you're using gasoline. Having two burners, we use this stove to cook more complex dishes, for example, a pasta, which should require a pot with water on one side and the sauce on the other, or maybe some dishes that require more longer cooking because we have bigger autonomy, like, for example, a stew or a soup. And also, like you've seen before, our foldable oven is placed on top of that, so these are the burners that give the flame to heat up inside the oven. This is a jet boil minimum. It's a personal cooking system and one of the gadgets we are really proud of. We basically use it every single day. It allows you to boil up to one liter of water in less than two minutes, everywhere you are. Boiling water, it doesn't mean that you just make coffee out of it, but you can cook some eggs, and I even managed to make some pasta with this one. We have a little attachment where you can cook the sauce on one side in a little pan, and then in here, we can cook up to 200 grams, so it's two portions of pasta. Also, it's very small and all the pieces fit inside this little cup here. So this is a gas cartridge. In this case, we have one that we bought in Mexico. It has got the standard screw cup that is easily uh, available all around the world. But usually you will find them to be lower and smaller. Some of them, they even fit inside this cup, bringing the total height for something you want to bring with you this high. It has got a special burner that allows you to use it even below freezing temperatures. It is durable, portable, small, great for backpacking. It totally saved us when we went on the Everest base camp trek, as we could carry it with us, it was very light, and we could make a hot beverage every time we needed it. This is a retractable tabletop that I installed myself. It goes all the way, slides inside there, and it has got this stainless steel stand to keep it more solid. It's quick and simple, you just let it out, and we use it when we don't have the time to set all our camping layout. So, to cook something quick, to have our breakfast in the morning, for example. All our camping gear, so the tables, the chairs, the awning, and so on, it all fits in this little space behind this table. All the area under the bed, we use that for storage. 
and have things such as this foldable bucket or the first aid kit or a bag for our toiletries. For our potable water, we keep filling up our bottles and containers. We try to be as much sustainable as we can be. Traveling so far, we've seen a lot of problems that are afflicting our world, especially about plastic pollution and single-use plastic. This was a very good buy. We haven't tried it yet and we bought it specifically for Africa. It's a gravity filter and uh, we never had one before, but uh, it is very important to have a water filter when you do such a trip like ours. This is our extinguisher. It's uh, smaller compared to the usual one or three or five kilograms, but it has got a patent on it that provides basically more or less the same erogation. We got for our safety in case of fire, but also in some countries like Argentina, it is obligatory to have an extinguisher in the car. It is also safer for the environment compared to the other traditional extinguisher. About our uh, electronics, we keep something on top of the bed and other things uh, under. Uh, for example, the camera, we try always to have it on handy because you never know when the opportunity for a good photo may come up. However, our photographic equipment is not professional. This Canon, for example, is 8 years old and our drone is a DJI Phantom 3 standard that is not anymore in production. But we are happy with it and uh, what we can do is just make the best out of it. We would love to have, of course, uh, something more professional, but it's okay. Like photographers say, the best camera is the one that you've got. Photography is a continuous learning process and when we started this trip we didn't have any experience. We actually bought our drone in 2017 in Australia. But by practicing, talking with our friends photographer, uh, watching some tutorials online, then our technique improved. Besides these curtains with pockets, on top of the ceiling we have a cargo elastic net where we keep our light clothes like underwear, pyjamas, socks. All the rest of the clothes we store in these fabric bags but a bit like our wardrobe. During the day while we are driving, our clothes together with some other things are resting on top of a bed. And during the evening when we will find a camping spot, we move everything in front to free all the space available for us to sleep. These are our mosquito nets and we have shaped them around our rear doors, which with a very simple system are placed on the open door, which is then closed by sealing the entire contour using the door seal. Something that I would like to show you are the sewing here on our mosquito nets. Now, during the years, by opening and closing the doors, they sustain damages. And Vera, with the help of the needle and the thread, she's sewing it together. I would like to clarify that we reuse and repair all that is possible and as many times as we can. Now, how much does it cost a mosquito net? A few dollars per meter. And it took Vera days to sew it together. The fact is that things like this end up in landfills or oceans. And that is the problem. Also, these uh, white patches here, Bera used some old trousers to repair the fabric bags. Uh, our fan, for example, it broke, I opened it up, I reconnected the wires, some tape, and it is still working. Or our plastic boxes, the one that we keep under the bed, by pulling them in and out, the handles broke. And by using some strong tape, I place it all around and we are still using them. These are the small changes that each and every one of us can make. We must stop thinking that our home are just the four walls that surround us. The whole planet Earth is our home. You may not know it, but on average only 9% of the plastic that we put in our recycling bin actually gets recycled. And on average, we eat 250 grams of microplastic per year. And that is the equivalent of eating a credit card each week. Behind the passenger seat, it's our fridge freezer. It has the capacity of 25 liters and we can easily store the food up to one week. It can reach the temperature of minus 18 Celsius and it only consumes 4 ampere per hour. But the best thing of having a fridge is to be able to enjoy a nice cold drink and a hot day like this. Salute! This is our shower. These are our water tanks, 25 liters each. We have 25 liters of hot water and cold water. The shower is powered by a marine water pump located under the driver's seat. 
Inside our top tank, there is an electric element, a water heater that heats up 25 liters of water in about 40 minutes. This is the front of our Toto, where uh, the windshield is our big flat screen TV where the show changes every day. We have several 12 volt socket all around and we use the USB chargers to charge up our mobile phones and electronic devices. They also have a little screen so we can monitor the voltage of the battery and also the ampere and the absorption of the current. We don't have an inverter as we were discouraged to buy one to charge electronic such as a laptop or the battery of the drones because it may actually damage the components of these devices. And we preferred instead to buy some dedicated chargers that they convert 12 volts of the battery directly into a 17 or 20 volts that are necessary to charge these devices. Up here we got a dashboard camera, this is something we advise any driver to have in their car because it records what's happening in front and a bit of the side of the vehicle and it may help you in case of accident to prove that you're right. A foreigner on foreign land is the majority of times considered wrong in case of accident and sometimes you also deal with corrupted police or there is the uh, language barrier but having things recorded on the camera may actually get you out of troubles. As a bonus our Toto came with uh, a sunroof and that order to be an additional air intake, which is good when you sleep inside the car, it provides better access to the front of the roof rack, but also in case you want to take photos of wildlife, you can do that in the distance without scaring them. But something very special and also a bit romantic is that while we are laying in bed, we can enjoy watching the stars before falling asleep. Something we believe to be also very useful is this mini satellite rescue device that works all around the world and by paying a little fee each month it gives you that extra peace of mind when you are traveling through dangerous countries or somewhere when you don't have a mobile phone coverage. Basically it sends an SOS message but it also works as a tracker tracking your live position and we have a set of pre-written messages that we can send to our families and friends uh, via email or text message indicating that we are well, there is no coverage and which one is our uh, latitude and longitude position. We paid our total 7,500 British pound, which is about 8,500 US dollars, and the total cost for the modification was about four to five thousands. Our trip is self-funded, the result of many years of sacrifice and hard work. We live a very simple but rewarding life. Our expenses are a fraction of what we sustained in England. And when traveling, the main costs are transportation, accommodation and restaurants. And our Toto supply all of this. Yes, depending on which country we are and for how long we stay, but on average our monthly costs do not exceed a few hundred dollars per month. It was a case, for example, in Alaska, we stayed there over a month and all-inclusive we spent that it was 360 US dollars. We've been fishing salmon, making caviar, baking our own bread, and even walking on glaciers and witnessing the northern lights. There is still so much that you can do and see in this world, and it is free. We feel very lucky and blessed to be able to do what we do and we understood that what really matters in life is really little. Money you can make, but unfortunately time is irreversible and a trip like this enriches you inside. We hope you enjoyed the tour of our 4x4 home on wheels and if you want to follow our story, see our photos or videos, you can also find us on Facebook or Instagram at Alvito Expedition. The word Alvito comes from our names, Al from Aldo, V from Bera and To from Toto, our supercar. Also, if you have any questions or curiosity, just write us below and please, if you like the video, just give us some thumbs up and share it, that uh, uh, certainly will make us happy. Thank you all for watching. Thank you so much and until next time. Ciao, Ciao e arrivederci. arrivederci.